Well, hello again, and now I went and got myself a used Fuji X100. This is the original Fuji FinePix X100, and um, it's the one with the 12 megapixel bear type sensor. It's not the one with the X-Tran sensor. Um, the reason I went and got it again was I had the X100S in the past and I really enjoyed it. But, um, you know, it was kind of an expensive compact camera and wasn't really all that practical for me. Um, didn't really have that many uses for it, so I thought, well, you know, I could probably use the money for something that I'd be using more, much more often. But when I got to thinking about this one, you know, the price has come down so much on it. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive these days used and this one is basically mint condition and um, you know just one of those things I thought well why not so I, I don't want to go over the whole deal about the camera because everybody already knows about the Fuji X100 it's been out for when did that come out was it 2011 it's about I guess it's about five years or so <clears throat> for the original Fuji X100 and um, so this one actually also came with the Fuji uh, you know, the little lens ring here, the adapter ring, and the official aluminum Fuji uh, lens hood. And uh, by the way, what I do is, when you have this on here, it's a 49 millimeter lens uh, thread on there, filter thread. So I just go out and buy, I can hold on to it, uh, a generic 49 millimeter lens cap, you know, the pinch type. And um, I don't have to put any kind of filter in front of the lens like a neutral, not a neutral lens, um, whatever, you know, just a clear filter in front of the lens for protection. It's already enough protection anyway with the lens hood on it, but uh, since I stick it in my backpack for work, um, usually, I just use this little uh, pinch lens, uh, lens cap, and then there you go. So now it's well protected. So I'll just go over real quick about uh, my thoughts on it. I uh, have another video about the X100S when I had that. And uh, actually I have a video about the um, you know, slideshow, some of my favorite pictures from the X100S. And um, you know, of course there's always links in the description of the video. Since I don't insert the, the photos in the video that I'm making, uh, you'll find all my photos which are much, much better than my video ability. So don't judge me by my amateurish uh, video capabilities here making these videos. Uh, my image galleries speak for themselves. And again, I'm just a photography enthusiast, uh, not doing it professionally. But uh, that'll be in the description for the link to the gallery for this. So anyway, um, overall, everybody knows the X100 is slow. Everybody complained about it when it first came out being slow. Um, this has what firmware version on it? It's firmware version 2. Dot something or other. Um, it had, I think, 1.10 on it when I bought it, and the uh, first thing I did was upgrade it to the latest firmware that Fuji came out with. And it is reasonably quick now for uh, autofocus, and, um, you know, it, it's more than good enough for most situations for the type of person that would be using this type of camera. You know, it's not obviously a sports camera or a uh, wildlife camera or anything like that. It's uh, a fixed 35 millimeter equivalent f2.0 lens, which is extremely sharp. You could almost buy the camera and uh, consider that you bought a great 35 millimeter f2 lens with a, a free camera attached to the back of it. So, because that's kind of the way I look at it really when I shoot it. Uh, the lens is extremely sharp. It's a little bit soft I would say maybe at f2. It just kind of depends on where you're focused and if your subject's a little bit further away <clears throat> you're naturally going to be a little bit more depth of field and it's going to be sharper anyway. Um, but, you know, certainly f2.8, f4 you know, extremely sharp and really, really sharp in images. And I actually prefer the images from this compared to the um, um, X100S. And if you look at <clears throat> look at it, it's really almost identical to the X100S. Um, X100S has a, uh, I believe, a, a quick a quick menu button on the back and so on. Um, but it's almost identical. And uh, let me just go over real quick about the. Uh, things I don't like about it too much and the, that's one of the auto ISO, the auto ISO you can only set it to a max of 3200 don't really know why that is, you can uh, set the X100S I believe to um, 30, uh, 6400 and I'm talking about raw shooting, I always shoot raw 
And I know Fuji, like on the X-T1, X-100S, they always stopped you at um, ISO 6400 if you're shooting RAW. I don't know why. It's weird, but anyway, don't know why that is. Um, so write speed for when you take a photo, it takes about three seconds for a, a RAW image to be written to the card. A, um, it's using a Class 10 Lexar Pro card, and it's you know, 400 times is the... Uh, I don't know what the, how many megabytes per second write speed that is, but um, you know it's a card that would be written to much much quicker on a different camera. Um, speed overall, I'd say it's okay. It's just a little bit slow. There's some weird things about it, like uh, if you take a picture and you you click play, you know if you're reviewing the picture and you're actually reviewing it in the uh, actually no, I'm trying to remember. Okay, if you take a picture, not reviewing it. If you take the picture. Uh, using the electronic viewfinder, for example, you take the picture, you move your eye away from the electronic viewfinder, wanting, wanting to use the LCD on the back now to compose a picture. Uh, the LCD will be blank, basically, until the image is finished writing, uh, and then it'll switch over to the LCD. And I think, believe it's the same thing. If you want to use the LCD first, take a picture, and then you want to switch over to the EVF, which I always use. I know people are going to think I'm crazy for buying a camera like this, not really using the OVF. I just don't don't really like it. Um, I prefer to use the EVF because then you can see exactly what you're getting and um, you know there's none of that parallax issue and um, what you see is what you get in electronic viewfinder. Um, so that's a little bit odd with the write speed. Uh, selecting the, IF, the AF point, I know that was improved on the X100S but the way you have to do it on the X100 is you first have to press the AF button and then you can move Move the autofocus point around, or the yeah, the focus point around with the uh, little selector pad over here. Um, that's kind of annoying because you know it, I wish you could reassign one of the buttons over here on the right because then I'll be able to keep my you know just kind of one-handed operation. But uh, when you have to do those two key presses, one over here, one over here, then you sometimes you have to take your face away from the camera. Like, okay, which one was the AF button again? Um, again, these are really not big deal. You know, not not that big of an issue, but uh, just pointing out things that I would rather see different. Um, and uh, I'm not sure that why this is maybe a, just some kind of mechanical limitation on the leaf type shutter and the lens and everything. Uh, but you can only get one one hundred one one thousandths max shutter speed uh, at f2 even though you know the max shutter speed in general is one 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 four thousandths of a second. Um, you have to activate the build-in neutral density to neutral density filter to get, um, if you're using F2 in very bright conditions, you need know, to keep it at 1 1,000th or lower. Um, and what I've done is basically I assign the top uh, function button as the neutral density uh, option. So basically if I need to use that, I'll just press that and now it's active and uh, take my picture. If I want to quickly, you know, stop using neutral density, filter, uh, just press the function button again and you'll see the little display in the back change. Um, so, let's see if you can see that um, right, yeah, right there. And then you press it again and it goes away. So, um, so there's that. And the good, obviously, I already said it, it's extremely sharp images, um, excellent high ISO performance. Uh, Obviously, it's small and light, very lightweight, weighs almost nothing. I mean, it's very lightweight. Um, looks good, you know, maybe it doesn't look good to some people, but I actually like the way it looks. I think it looks really interesting. Um, and, of course, it's really inexpensive on the used market right now. It's for almost nothing, you know, around $400. And, um, what, what was, okay, so as far as the uh, focus, I got a note here about the, Assign uh, focus mode to raw button. Oh, okay, so the other customization I did was I assigned the focus mode to the raw button. You can change the function of the raw button to be other functions. Uh, so that would be kind of the things I use the most. You know, the function button on the top set to be the activation of the neutral density filter off and on. And uh, the raw button on the back, I use that to um, you know, change from either a single point focus or just like an auto area to let it select its own focus point. Um, that's really about it. There's really not much else to say about it. It's it's been well covered, obviously, over the years. And uh, but it's just something it's something to think about if you want uh, 12 megapixel 
small point and shoot type camera with you know superb image quality um, on the used market it's you know very very affordable right now and um, there's really nothing wrong with owning a five-year-old camera if it's still making really excellent pictures um, and uh, well this little strap by the way is one of my favorite little uh, Tamrac um, it's, I can't remember the exact model number but it's a Tamrac mirrorless something or other strap um, basically I found them on Amazon if you search Amazon for like Tamrac mirrorless camera strap uh, you'll probably find these but um, yeah, so it's just a nice little strap that's got this leather part on top that the the, the uh, nylon part of it slides through, so it's really comfortable on your neck and you know, sliding the camera around. But uh, anyway, that's that's about it really for the X100. Um, you know, look, taking a look at an old camera in 2016. So uh, if you want something like that, it, it's really a good buy, and um, you know, go out and find one and. Have some fun with it. Thanks. Goodbye.